this coverless journal because I thought it would be a great way to utilize the cyanotype print that I had made. And I liked the first one I made so much, the one on the left, that I came back and made a second one and added in some of the echo dyed paper that I had created and homemade paper that I had created as well. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Clothes Mixmedia. I hope you'll take a moment, subscribe to my channel, and join me for future endeavors, future adventures that I get into. That notification bell, of course, lets you know when I upload additional content. For this journal, I use just watercolor paper, 140 pound, 12 by 15 inches. I cut that in half. So I'm cutting at seven and a half inches, and I will use each of these cuts to create one piece of paper or one fold over. Now, when you're looking at this paper or when you're folding this paper, there's a, there's a smooth side and there is a rough side to the paper. And I found that the smooth side, when you put that on the outside, it has a, um, not as much bounce to it as the rough side. So when you kind of fold that over and it springs back on you, it doesn't really want to lay in that natural fold. But when you fold it and it kind of collapses onto itself, that's the side that I use. So see, there's that spring. You fold that over with the smooth side out, and it just really wants to lay in that fold. So I put the two edges together and make sure that they are even, and then I just use my bone folder to go over it. And again, this is just 140 pound weight, cold pressed, inexpensive watercolor paper. And I'm gonna put all of this together without a cover to utilize just as my own personal art journal. So it's giving me a good substrate to work on. So we will get, I'm gonna use 11 pieces. And um, this is all of the handmade papers that I've made. There's the echo dyed paper. And um, I also have some just paper that I actually created from a pulp slurry. So handcrafted or handmade paper as well. And I'm gonna use the echo dyed and the handcrafted in the composition of this. So I'm just gonna fold over that echo dye and fold a sheet of that handcrafted and tuck that down inside. Now, I, I wasn't really thinking when I started folding these. These are uh, bigger than I need. So I am going to have to go back and um, pull these apart and trim up that echo dyed paper and just cut it down a little bit. You'll see why. See, so when I start putting them together, I'm like, uh-oh, um, <laughs> I didn't think this through. So we have seven and a half width, so we just need to trim this down a little bit. So I'll stick that in my um, cutter and or my trimmer, and we'll trim those down and then fold them once again. So now we have a piece that will work inside that. So for a signature, I'm putting one sheet of watercolor paper, paper one sheet of echo dye paper, and one sheet of the handcrafted paper. And I'm going to utilize three of these. So I'm going to sandwich that in between two plain sheets, a three piece signature, two just plain watercolor sheets, to the trifold or the three, and, and that's what we will use to create this book. So now we need to mark where we are going to bind it and how we're gonna bind it. So I'm just taking a pencil and I'm marking a half inch from the end, and then I'm gonna go one inch from that half inch mark, so we're one and a half inch in, and then I will do another inch from that. So we have three marks there on each end, one at a half inch, one at one and a half inch, and one at two and a half inches. So I'm taking the another sheet of the paper and I'm marking it off the first and then I will put one on the top, one on the bottom, and I'm going to squeeze them together and just draw a line from the mark on my top to the mark on my better, bottom. So I'm just marking these so I'll know where to use my craft pick to punch the hole. Now that I have all of that marked, I'm gonna take this blue 
paper, blue pencil, and just go along one edge. And, and I'll show you why I do that. I do that so I always have them in the right order. So this is just a wax thread. I am going to uh, put this on the needle. And I measure out about four or five times, and it, that turns out to not be enough thread for the complete project, but um, it's pretty easy to, to tie it off on the inside and, and continue on. So for the first binding, I'm going to punch the holes first where I have those little pencil marks. So I'm just taking this craft pick and lightly punching a hole through the paper. And then I am going to go from the outside so that my knot is on the outside, in through the next hole, back through the third hole, and we're just going to go in and out. Now I'm leaving a little slack there, and I'll show you why, because I have that batik fabric that we are going to use just for decoration on, on the uh, journal, and, and I want to tuck that inside there, so I'll show you that here in just a second. And now we'll come up through that final hole. Okay, so now we have that first pass done. And I'm going to pull out this batik fabric, and I'm going to cut it down to about a half inch in width. Now, in retrospect, I should have folded this on into, you know, a smaller piece, maybe folded it in half, folded it in half again, and then cut it. So it would all be very, very even, but I didn't. I did it did it this way. Uh, sewing is kind of not my thing, so I, I have a tendency to do this a little, kind of the long way or the hard way. And I'm just going to cut it into pieces that I will have enough workable fabric. So I'm going to stick that through and leave enough on the front that I will be able to trim it down later. And I want enough on the back to make sure that I have enough to go across the spine and have enough on the back side of the book. Now I've decided that these are, are still too wide, so I'm going to make yet another trim on this and we'll stick it back inside there. There we go. So I think that's going to work. I'm going to trim this one down again, and I think I'm going to trim it one more time <laughs> before, before it's all said and done. So, you know, it's better to measure twice and cut one, once instead of not measuring at all and cutting two or three times, but learn from my mistakes. And I'm going to make sure that everything is, is tight on the inside. And now I'm going to stick that second piece. Now I punch these as I go. I, you know, you can punch them all at one time and, and have them all ready. I chose to do it this way. That's certainly your own discretion. So now I'm looking for that little blue mark to make sure I have that lined up properly. And now through the outside, we're going to go from the outside in. And we'll go back from the inside out. And then we're just going to go underneath that stitch there. See how we're just going right underneath that stitch that we placed on that first. And then we'll go back through on the other hole. And you have lots of long, long threads. This up a bit. So I am going to loosen this thread up and pull that out once again and, and trim, it, trim it down one more time. 
So like I said, measure once or measure twice, cut once rather than cut thrice and never measure. So I, that will work a lot better. So we'll just stick that back through there and we'll just pull that through. I'm just making sure I have enough on, on each side. And we'll go ahead and, and just go ahead and cut this one down again as well. I'm just going to stick that back in there and now we are good to go. So we've gone through that stitch and we're back to the inside of the book and we'll come back up next to our other piece of batik, go underneath that first stitch and back down through that hole next to the batik or next to the fabric and then we will come up through the final hole. So now we're going to put the third signature on and this one has the the three pieces in it. It has the echo dyed paper, the handcrafted paper, and the watercolor paper. So I'm just making sure I'm punching through all three, holding it firmly so it doesn't, you know, slip around or slide around. And I'm looking for that little blue mark to make sure that I have it lined up. And I'm going to go from the outside in is what I want to do. And I think I've just gone the wrong way. So we'll pull that back out. You guys are really learning from my mistakes on this. So I'm going to re-thread that needle and we're going to go from the outside in on that bottom hole. And we'll come up to that second one. And what we're going to do is we're going to go under underneath that stitch again and we always want to go underneath the stitch or the section that is the farthest away from the side that we're coming. So when this, when these stitches start to form that little X, you'll want to go underneath the stitch that is far away as a far away from the side you started. I hope that makes sense. Okay, and now we're again underneath this stitch that is the furthest away from the side we started. And then back down through the hole next to it and back up through the final hole. Now I've kind of fast forwarded through or have moved on um, through putting additional pieces together and now we're getting towards the end and I just kind of want to show you once again what we're doing here. So we are going to grab a hold of what we have and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start on the outside and go from the outside in. We'll come up next to that fabric go underneath the stitch that is the furthest from the side that we are coming, down through the hole next to the fabric, back up towards the second piece of fabric, once again through that furthest hole or through the furthest stitch, back down,
and I wanted to kind of illustrate this end here where we had a few more pieces that you could see it. So we're going to come up to this final stitch and we're doing this on each one. And then we are going to go and pick up through that previous stitch on the previous one to kind of bind these together. So we're just circling back around to that previous signature and grabbing that top stitch there to tie these ends together. So let's start through the center and we'll just finish this off. So we're going to go through the center. We're going to come up next to the fabric through the furthest stitch back down to the center or back down into the inside back up next to the fabric, pulling that fabric to make sure it's out of the way, through the furthest stitch, or through the furthest section of that stitch, and then back up through the final end, and then we'll just tie off a knot to finish off the book. And I'm just grabbing it on the previous stitch. I'm going to go back into the inside and tie the knot off here in the inside. Open that up, and that completes it. I'm just going to trim off all these little threads next to the knots. I'm going to stick a little piece of, a little bit of glue on each of those knots to kind of secure them. And now I'm going to trim down my fabric and we'll glue that fabric into place on the front and we'll turn it over and do the same thing on the back. Let's glue that into place. Glue it into place once again. Flip it over, do the same thing on this side. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. This is going to be an art journal, so where you can watercolor paper in it or watercolor in it, mixed media, collage, whatever, stencil, etc. And, um, you know, it's going to get threadbare, worn. So I want it to have kind of that casual, rustic sort of look. And now I'm going to pull out one of my cyanotypes. And just kind of decide where I'm going to put that. I think I'm going to cut that down a bit. And this is kind of how the inside, look how flat this lays. This is, they're so easy to work on like this. You can see the different papers inside here. They all lay flat. You have the nice echo dyed, the nice handcrafted. It just makes a, a really nice little art journal, I think. Yeah, a little more personal than the ones that are bound from the store, right? Now I'm just taking my eraser and, and getting rid of the little blue marks at the top and, and uh, any pencil marks that I can see on there still. And, and that uh, makes a nice stitch on the outside of this. Now I'm just going to trim this cyanotype down. And I think I want to kind of small. I'm trying to decide if I want any of this fabric behind it. And I don't think so. I don't think it needs it. You can just see my thought process here, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. 
So I'm looking for uh, something to lay underneath that, and I think I'm going to decide on a piece of vellum. So it's kind of subtle, um, doesn't really have a um, real flashy appearance. So I'm just going to cut this slightly larger than my uh, piece of cyanotype there and just, you know, create a little bit of a border with that vellum just to layer it up a tad on the front cover. And I like the way that that works. So we'll just glue it down to the vellum first and then we'll glue the vellum to the front cover. I'm still thinking about the fabric, but I decide against it totally. So there we go. And I think that's simple, but, but easy. And I'm going to grab some uh, ink. And put a little stenciling on the front of this, I think. So I have this um, Vandela type stencil that I'm going to use, and I'm just deciding which one. And I'm going with a stormy blue distress oxide. And just a real simple little stencil there in the corner. And we'll put that in the opposite corner as well to kind of balance that. And now I'm going to do something on the back as well. I like that. And there. Quick and easy. Now I'm going to use the rest of this piece of uh, batik print cotton and just tie that in a bow, trim these up, put a little dovetail on the end of each, and there you have it. So these are the two that I made, and they are just so easy to put together, easy to work with. They are going to be great for journaling in. I started in my other one, but I didn't open that up and show you because it's kind of personal writing in there, so I didn't want to just throw that out there. And once again, my name is Peg. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel, and I have linked some additional videos for the cyanotypes here at the end screen, and I hope you'll, you'll take a moment and watch those as well. Thanks for being here. Appreciate your comments. Please give me that thumbs up. And of course, hit that uh, subscribe button. I'd love to have you come back. Bye for now.